Morning. Well, we're back in the shop today and getting ready to bust it out on this uh, Cat 375 link. Um, I already did a little work here. You can see I made myself lifting out. It looks like there used to be one on here that broke off. And this is a really awkward part to uh, handle and get on the mill without one. So I just bent myself up a piece of bar stock in the uh, press and welded it on there to give myself a lifting point. You can see it isn't quite balanced. She's hanging a little bit crooked. Um, I stuck it on. It's funny because looking at this thing, honestly, I would have thought that it needed to be quite a ways that way. And that's where you can see I tacked it on a couple of spots and it kept being heavy to this end. So then I uh, went ahead and welded it on, lined up with the old one, and now it's a little heavy the other way. So I should have cheated and gone just to fuzz the direction that I thought. But <clears throat> anyways, I'm just uh, debating how I'm going to Clamp this thing up. I've got to do a little bit of head scratching on it once. I think what I might do is check for burrs on the bottom edge here and then try just setting it right on the table and run an indicator through these bores. Because the bore on that end is the one that I'm fixing, so we're leaving this end alone. And with that being the case, I think what I'm going to do is just try setting it on the table, run an indicator back and forth through these bores, and if those um, are showing that they are, you know, halfway, uh, what do you want to say, level to the table or parallel with the table, then I'm just going to put a single block under the end of that, I think, right in the middle, so I get basically three-point, you know, clamp here, here, and one out there. Put some stop blocks behind it, probably, so it doesn't slide, and then, uh, have at her. So, I'll bring you guys back when I get a little more of it figured out. roughing pass we're cutting uh, 50 thousandths over final bore size you can definitely see the we're cutting all on one side that's uh, thanks to whoever poured it off center last time we're cutting her back to center again always fun when you're dealing with ugliness We had to do a bunch of hand welding because the uh, bore welder didn't like some what was in the hole and this is our first attempt at taking a shave through there. We'll see if uh, it'll eat this or not. Pretty healthy cut so I'm not sure if we're going to get away with this. So 
some reason my camera shut off. Anyway, we're through the worst spot now. Hopefully she'll just eat and carve her way on through there now. Got a big goober in the weld there. It's another spot the bore welder had a problem. So. Starting to get through that one now. void in my weld up there. I was afraid of that. Like I say, it's a real bad problem to the bar welder, so I'll be in there hand touching up some of that stuff. Alright. Should have one more pass after this. I could have taken it all in one pass, but I wanted to make sure that uh, this last pass before this was a pretty heavy one, so I decided uh, even though it's still measured a little undersized when I checked, to let it cut through there. Make sure the hole is nice and true. So you get a fair amount of bar deflection under a heavy cut. And then that way my final, final pass, I've got about another uh, five thou to go. That one will uh, be nice dead flat. And then we got to do the other side. The other side's a little scary because this bore, I don't remember if I've told you guys this yet or not so when I set this up made my first cuts I discovered that the uh, previous repair someone probably repaired this one with a portable line boring rig something like mine in the field and did not remove it from the machine well the problem is when you do that there's no way to tell if you're actually on center down here and they probably just lined up with some lineup cones you can get fairly accurate you know if you machine yourself some spacer as long as the bore isn't too bad machine up some spacers that slide into the bore that center your bar but someone most likely um, just slammed some lineup cones in there and anyways the results of that was that bore was a bit off center I don't know how bad but I I didn't bother measuring I got centered back up on where it was supposed to be but then they had actually ended up boring this pinhole through crooked so much so that on this end it was about an eighth of an inch off from where the center line of the bore was supposed to be. So a combination of off center that direction and crooked. So I had to move it back where it's supposed to be. And the problem with that, I don't know if you can see in there, is I got a few more rumping passes, but so far I'm quite a ways from uh, cleaning up on that side because I had to move the bore over so much. So I'm a little terrified that I'm gonna be in there doing a bunch of hand welding, but we'll see. I'm gonna get the bore on the other side done and then we'll come back over here and take a few more cuts in that hole and see where we're at. All right, we're on the finished pass on this side. So there's a couple of voids in there where it didn't quite clean up, but they're small enough that we're gonna ignore it. Um, we're at, you know, like, 99% surface contact and at that point it's not worth fighting with them little cavities. Can't even see them from this angle because they're up around the top side of the bore. But anyway, we're uh, about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of this bore and then we are ready to yank this thing out of here, bust her down and uh, press some new bushings in and get her out of here. I'll uh, probably show you guys some of that process when we get to it. Alright, get ready to press the bushings into these bores. Um, I had to figure out how to get this thing in the press, and it's a fistful. It's a little sketchy. This uh, lift is rated at 1,000 pounds, but I'm not sure it's rated at 1,000 pounds with it hanging way off the end of the forks like this. So definitely going to keep my toes out from under it. But anyway, the idea is that I can stuff it up into the press and uh, 
squish the bushings in, but I got to lower the table on this press now in order to be able to get it in here. So we're going to get her set up. This is very, very important, by the way, if you're going to just brute force them in and not shrink them with uh, liquid nitrogen. I've had some really bad experiences with them plowing metal and galling up. 
So now I strictly never put in a bushing under press fit without. Good dish. All right, we're gonna give her a show to see what she does. everybody there she is sealed slapped in board bushings pressed in ready to go back on center instead of all wonky cockeyed nonsense like it was before with wallered out holes so that's a wrap on that one we'll uh bring you guys back when we get into this mess this is going to be some fun it's going to be some serious uh, carnage repair happening here i'll uh Try and document this process halfway decent. It ought to be interesting. So, anyways, that's it. That's the end of the uh, Cat 375 H-Link repair.